the Elise DeLucci Show, episode 95. This is a special episode today. We are talking about NFTs, NFT 101. A bunch of you uh, had reached out to me over the last six months, a year, asked me, hey, can you do an episode on NFTs? Can you explain them to me? What are they? How do I buy them? So that's what we're talking about today. And let me just say a few things. One, I'm honored that you're asking me to explain this to you. Uh, you obviously follow me on social media. You're a loyal listener to the podcast, or maybe you know me from stand-up, but I do talk about um, the fact that I'm in finance. I've been in uh, tech, uh, digital, and finance, the the blend of those uh, the, those intersections for the last almost 20 years now. Um, you know that I'm a uh, cryptocurrency trader uh, since 2016, 2017. Um, you do know that I'm an NFT owner. And I talk about this stuff sometimes, whether it be on stage, whether it be, uh, you know, on social media, whether it be on the podcast. And it's mostly, you know, I talk about it here and there on the podcast, things I've bought and whatnot. Um, so you're asking me and you're asking me because I'm like your girlfriend next door. I'm your mom friend. And who better to explain something than, uh, this crazy complicated world of NFTs, non-fungible tokens, than a friend, um, you can Google all of, all you want. Um, it's it's a, it's a hard uh, thing to sort of wrap your head around. So I'm going to try my best to explain this to you in layman's terms. And let me say this. Uh, these opinions, this uh, information that I'm going to be sharing, it's just my own. It's uh, my research, my information, the things I've been doing for the last few years, what my understanding of the space is. We don't have any guests on today's show. If you do want to invest in this sort of thing, talk to an investment professional. I'm not a financial advisor, and none of uh, my opinions are investment advice, and they do not reflect my current employer or any previous employer that I've had. So just a heads up on there, and I sort of have to say that disclaimer. So let's get into it. And and let me just also note that because this is a little technical, we might stop and uh, say, hey, what's blockchain? Or hey, what's ledger technology, right? So NFTs, non-fungible tokens. You've been hearing about them all over the place. Uh, in 2021, the NFT marketplace, it had hit over $2 billion. There was uh, a few famous NFTs that have made the papers, made mainstream media, has everybody buzzing about um Beeple, a digital artist, um, he had sold a NFT at Christie's Auction House in New York uh, last year for somewhere in the re- region, region of $65 million. Uh, there has been a tweet by the uh, Twitter, the founder of Twitter, that was sold for about $2 million. And then there was a kitty cat, Nyan cat. It's a little rainbow cat holding what looks like a, a Pop-Tart. This was a cat meme that went popular, you know, went viral around the internet in about 2010, 2011. That was tokenized um, into an NFT, and then that sold for $600,000, okay? So there's real money in this thing. So what is this? Um, NFT, non-fungible token. We're hearing about this and saying it's a non-fungible token doesn't make it any more understandable. In fact, it makes it more confusing. So what's fungibility? Fungibility is like fiat currency. Fiat currency is also a, 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 a term you'll hear a lot in the crypto NFT world. Fiat currency is country currency, the dollar, the yen, uh, the euro, right? So currency is fungible because you could take a $10 bill and you can exchange it for two fives, right? It's equal. It's interchangeable. Uh, fungibility are things that are interchangeable. A Bitcoin is, a, is fungible, right? Because you can exchange one Bitcoin for one Bitcoin, right? That it's a, you get exactly the same thing when you're interchanging a fungible asset, right? A non fungible asset is something that is unique, like art. You know, um, one uh, Mona Lisa is is not going to be uh, equal to another Mona Lisa, right? It, it's one baseball card is not equal to another baseball card. One diamond is not equal to another diamond. So that's a non fungible asset. And an NFT is a non-fungible token. So it's a piece of, uh, right now, digital art, right, that is not interchangeable to another. Each one is unique. And the NFTs, how do they work, right? How do NFTs work? NFTs are part of the Ethereum blockchain, And Ethereum is a cryptocurrency like, you know, uh, any of these cryptocurrencies you've been hearing about. 
Bitcoin, Dogecoin, uh, SHIB, Floki, Inu, Ethereum, that coin, Ether, the, uh, the symbol, ETH, is, uh, is the coin that you need to buy NFTs. Now, I mean, yes, side note, you can buy NFTs um, with other uh, cryptocurrencies, but I use Ethereum to buy my NFTs. And everything I'm telling you is the stuff that I do. And like I said, I know. So I don't use other currencies to buy NFTs. Will I in the future? Maybe. But right now, let's say that just at a very high level, NFTs are part of the Ethereum blockchain. So what is a blockchain? This is crucial just to understand. So we'll take a little tiny break on what's blockchain. Blockchain is digital ledger technology. Blockchain, very simple, is like a ledger. And we all know what a physical ledger is. Blockchain is a digitized ledger. It's essentially, it's a system, right? It's a computing system, a way to store and record data, information, that makes it very difficult or impossible to change, to hack into, um, to, to cheat the system. So it records it. So little example Say you're the house that you live in, the apartment that you live in. You want to know uh, who lived in that apartment beforehand. Um, you're going to go through the deed records. You're going to go through, you know, all this sort of stuff. Maybe it's in Google spreadsheets, Excel spreadsheets, right? Like if someone's entered it, uh, the management company or apartment building, they're entering in um, whoever, who owned this place from the beginning. Blah, blah, blah. It's all, and that's all culled information from papers and and deeds and transfers and bank loans and all this kind of stuff, right? And it, it's all in that spreadsheet. If, say, your building that you live in, your apartment, the deed of your house uh, was on the blockchain, right? Like, say that, that that information was on the blockchain from the, the very start. You would be able, the blockchain would be able to have all of that recorded information, the buys, the sells of the houses, the house, right? And it would, and you would, and it would all be true, right? So you can imagine how this, Digital ledger technology is a huge deal in the world, right? If you can have a digital ledger, there's no more physical record keeping um, and, and stuff all over the place. And the fact that it, it, it uses cryptography, it makes it hard to break, is a huge deal. So, right. So that's the blockchain at a really high level. And NFTs are part of that Ethereum blockchain. If you want to buy an NFT, you have to have Ethereum. You have to have the cryptocurrency Ethereum. So we will... Um, talk about, of course, is this worth buying? Um, what exactly are you buying? But I know that there are people out there that are just eager to buy and they, for whatever reason, they can't get the, the straightforward way or maybe they don't trust the YouTube videos that they're watching. I don't know. So to talk about how do you buy an NFT, where can I find NFTs? Do yourself a favor. Go to the website, OpenSea.io. OpenSea like open the door and see like where you swim, opensea.io. And you can see that's an NFT marketplace. That's like the eBay for NFTs. That's like a storefront for, for all NFTs, the Etsy of NFTs, whatever you want to call it. There's other ones. There's ones called Rarible. There's other, there's other NFT uh, marketplaces where you can go buy and sell. But if you notice when you go on OpenSea, if you wanted to click on one of these things and buy, it's not going to say you can buy, can I buy them in a dollar? Can you, how, it's in, how much is it in dollars? It's going to be in Ethereum, right? And you might see ETH or you might see WETH, which is wrapped ether. We won't get into um, wrapped ether, but you need Ethereum, right? So how do you get Ethereum? How do you get this cryptocurrency? You download the Coinbase app, the Coinbase Exchange app, and you also download the Coinbase wallet. And those are from the same company, Coinbase, and they make an, they have an exchange, which is where you can put, insert your debit card, your credit card, whatever, and you can change your dollars for Ethereum. You do that in the Coinbase Exchange. And the Coinbase Exchange app, it's a blue square with a, a white C. That's what that app looks like in the App Store. And then you also, once you buy that Ethereum and it's sitting on the exchange, right? Because it'll sit there. You can you could keep it there. I don't advise you to keep it in the exchange. I suggest you change your, uh, your Ethereum, it, move it to a wallet. So then you want to download the Coinbase wallet. There are lots of wallets you could download that you could use, but for for the ease of use for this uh, explanation, 
I would say use the Coinbase wallet. And the Coinbase wallet, you type in Coinbase wallet in the app store and it pops up. And it's a blue square with a white circle and another little blue square, right? And then the other app that you're going to want to get is you're going to want to get the Coin Market Cap app. And that's where you could check the price of Ether. This isn't really so, and, and other cryptocurrencies, this isn't really so necessary, right, like to have. This is if you're really trading, you're buying, you're selling cryptos, you, you know, blah, 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 and you're, you really want to be on top of it, then you'd want to download CoinMarketCap. And it's a good app just to have, by the way, if you just want to be, keep your, you know, sort of a hand in the bag, so to speak. But if you want to go on OpenSea.io and you want to buy a NFT, you need the Coinbase exchange to buy Ethereum and you need the wallet because the wallet not only stores your Ethereum, it also is going to store your NFT, right? So once you go through those transactions and you have that on your phone, then you can easily go to OpenSea, which is a DEX, a decentralized exchange, and then you, you, you'll you see a little, hand, if you're on your cell phone, you're, you'll see a little hamburger menu in the upper right corner. You click that and it'll say connect your wallet and it'll give you some options. Connect your Coinbase wallet, connect your MetaMask wallet, you're going to connect your Coinbase wallet. And then you'll be able to proceed with the transaction. You're going to think it's weird, though. Let me tell you. You're going to think it's weird. You're going to say, hey, wait a second, Elise. How come I didn't have to log into OpenSea? What the hell is this? What kind of what kind of shady, fagazi stuff is this? And you don't have to because it's a decentralized exchange. You don't have to log in, right? So, that, that again, there's a comfort level here with all this stuff. But that is essentially how you buy an NFT. And if you want to see where your NFT goes after you buy it, you go back into that Coinbase wallet, right? And you'll see, uh, you'll open the wallet. I'm opening my wallet right now. On the There's two tabs if you have NFTs. There's one left side when you open up the app, you'll see coins, right? Which is your currencies. And on the right tab, it'll say NFTs and it'll show you all the NFTs that you own. So that's how you do it essentially, Right? high level, that's how I do it. There's other, again, there's other nuances. We can store our NFTs in cold storage on the Nano Ledger, which is a, um, which is not, wouldn't be an app on your phone, right? This is a separate storage function that you would put in your, you know, your safe and you would have a seed phrase and a paper key and lots of stuff. But for the purposes of Let's get right out of the way, out of the top of this episode. How do I buy it? What do I need? What apps do I need to get it going? That's what you need, and that's how you do it. Now, why, what should you buy? Why would you buy an NFT? Um, what, what is worth what, right? The reason why everybody's so excited about NFTs is because it's a way right now using to use technology to be able to sell digital art. So, you know, and digital art, what's digital art? That could be anything. It could be a drawing that you draw and you take a picture of, right? It could be a piece of music that you've made in GarageBand on your computer. It could be a tweet, right? It could be a TikTok video. It could be something that you made in Photoshop, you know, digital art, right? That, it, you know, it's a JPEG. It, it, it's, it's a GIF. It's a JPEG. So that that's what everybody's excited about, right? And if you're an artist and you always make beautiful things within Photoshop, once you mint your art, right, which is that that's the, how you talk about it. If you once you mint your art, tokenize your art, turn it into an NFT, which is not a difficult process to do these days. It was harder over a year ago, but... Mm. Once you do that, you get a piece of the sale every time it's sold and resold, right? So there's an opportunity, a big opportunity for digital artists. They're able to make money. They're able to monetize their wares. They don't have to um, go through uh, galleries and that kind of stuff. So if, and if you're a collector, right? If you're not the artist and you're a collector, it's a, it's a, it, this is a low key flex. This is a cool thing. This is something, this is something for you to um, collect. You might have fancy cars in a garage, right? This is a, this is another thing that you have. You have NFTs, okay? Um, do people think that this is really going to be like collecting art? You know, collecting Picassos? Yeah, they do. They do. They feel like this is this is the 21st century of art collecting, right? The person that bought the Beeple picture for... Um, you know, $69 million at the auction, they 
they're very rich, and they feel that this is art collects, art collecting in our day and age. Now, the thing is, is that you can't, what are you doing with this stuff? I know, you're like, okay, Elise, the person that bought that $69 million Beeple picture, what the hell is he doing with it? He's keeping it, well, for, it's worth $69 million. I'll tell you right now, he's going to have that thing in cold storage in a Cold War bunker in some, some, some hill somewhere, whatever. He's not going to probably have that in a hot wallet. Not because that the hot wallets get hacked. It's very difficult, but the cold storage is the safest. And for something that, that valuable, you would want to do that. But um, he's doing it because he wants to have NFTs. The same reason why you would wear a shirt that says Gucci on it. The same reason why you might have a, a watch collection. The same reason why you might not wear 75 diamond rings, but you might have some 75 diamond rings in your safe. He just wants to have it. He also knows that there's value to that specific uh, NFT that he has, and there's, there's demand for it, and he wants to do it. It's a flex. It's a social currency, right? Um, that's why he has it. Now, does he have it displayed in his house somewhere? Maybe, maybe he has it displayed, but can you display that same exact JPEG in your house that the guy bought? Can you display the $69 million Beeple, a uh, piece of digital art that this guy paid 69 million for? Yes, you can. You can get the JPEG, right? You could throw it up into a digital picture frame on your house. And you can also have a $69 million piece of art, digital art hanging on your wall. So how, how stupid are you thinking is this guy? Why do you spend all this money? Because he wants the rights to it. He wants the rights. And that is what an NFT is. When you buy an NFT, you are buying the rights to that digital image, right? So I can download this Beeple picture, like I said, that someone else paid multi-million dollars for. And, you know, I'm not going to care. And he's probably not going to care. But... He owns, he owns it. He has that digital, he owns that digital file, right? So <clears throat> you want to get a Monet, right? Like I, I or, or a Degas, I love Degas ballerinas. That is, though, those are the, uh, my favorite artists, right? And they're at the Musée d'Orsay in Paris. And I've been there and I love those beautiful ballerinas. Um, you know, it's, it could be on your wall and you could see, you could see the patina, you could see the, the, the way that it was painted. I mean, and it, you could, it could take you somewhere. That does something for me. And that's a physical item, but this is obviously not a physical item. So again, it's, uh, it's, it, it's, it's new. It's, it's very new for us. You know, it's the flex, it's the flex. And let me also just say this, when you have wallets, cold storage, you know, hardware wallets, uh, hot wallets online, you can see into each other's wallet, right? Because it's, it's public. Now you can't take the information out of the wallet. You can't steal somebody's stuff from their wallet, but you could see it. Like you could look, if you look up right now, if you go and maybe Reddit or Discord, or even just maybe on Google and you want to find like Mark Cuban's wallet, you know, he does a lot of uh, crypto and NFT stuff. If you want to go find his wallet, you probably could find his wallet. And then you could go on Etherscan, which is how you search wallets, and you could see the stuff that he owns, you know? So there's a lot of this kind of thing that's going on, you know? Like one time I asked my ex-husband for some money, side note, and uh, this was a while ago, and, and he gave it to me. Very nice. And um, he, he tells me, he's like, well, why, if you, why would you ask me for money for something when I looked in your wallet, I saw that you have crypto, so go sell some of the stuff you have. And isn't that so funny? This is, this is new. This is new. In this world, nothing is really private, okay? So, so, but at the, on, so that, for that's where it could do you a disservice. But on the flip side, if you have your friends and you all know each other's wallets, you're all checking out each other's art collection, it's just as if going into somebody's house and seeing it on the wall, right? So should you buy an NFT? Should you jump in? Again, you don't know what to buy. You got to do your research, okay? You got to do your research. There's a lot of animal communities in the NFT space, which are funny. And um, the Bored Ape Yacht Club, there was Pudgy Penguin, there's Pudgy Penguins, the Bored uh, Aliens, um, Crypto Kitties, uh, Crypto Punks, although those I don't think that are, they are animals. But, uh, you know, there are lots of communities, right? And there's a lot of hype around these communities. And there are people that are saying, 
well, I'm going to pay, you know, $5 for this uh, board ape. And then, you know, it gets bought and sold and bought and sold. And next thing you know, it's going around for $500,000. It's like anything else, supply and demand, right? Why do you buy a t-shirt, a Hanes t-shirt from Kmart for five bucks, but somebody else just went and went to buy a t-shirt with a Gucci logo on it, the same cotton t-shirt for $500 at the Gucci store because it's supply and demand and there's brand and there's marketing and there's advertising that goes behind that Gucci t-shirt with the logo that goes behind the legacy of Gucci and who they are. And the same thing goes for NFTs. Right, so some of these communities explode because they because everybody thinks this digital artwork is just amazing, and then sometimes it just explodes because Mark Cuban says this is the best new thing, or some basketball player bought this one you know NFT out of this random collection and it made word. There's lots of reasons why things do well. There's you know it, there's lots of reasons why they do well, but it's it, it it's, but at, like investing in general. You should like what you're buying. You should do your due diligence. You should research it. And the reality is, is that we are looking at a ton of supply right now in the NFT marketplace. There are so many NFTs, your mind blows up. And the reality is that 90% 90 of them are probably worthless and garbage. There are so many projects. There's a lot of scam projects on there. And I'm going to be honest with you. There are a lot of scam projects. But... If you are on OpenSea and you see this digital image that you think is just really super cool and you want to buy it, so buy it. What's the big deal? It's just like buying a new lipstick at the store, right? And if you are, is, you know, a 14-year-old kid, like one mom said she wanted to get her son an NFT for his birthday. I don't know if you're going to be able to buy him an NFT BTW, like, for him. You could probably set up the Coinbase wallet, the Coinbase exchange, show him how to use OpenSea on his phone, maybe give him $100, $200, whatever, um, to play with, right? You buy Ethereum, send it to his wallet, or, uh, you know, maybe not give him the dollars. You buy Ethereum with your debit card and your Coinbase, send him the Ethereum, send it to his wallet address. You know, there's all this. It's very instant, 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 instant. This is the beauty of crypto, right? So you you could do that. And then you next thing you know, your, your son, he has 100 bucks of $100 uh, U.S. equivalent of Ether in his wallet and then he could go and connect his wallet to OpenSea and he could buy, he can go buy whatever he wants. He could go buy the, the board alien, whatever club, you know? So, so, it, but it, it's a fun, it's just fun. It, you know, it's, it, it, right now it's just fun. Here's where I think the real implication of the technology lies in my opinion is like right now I'm looking at this Yadro on my, uh, uh, you know, it's like the apartment thing that I said before, but it's, I'm looking at this Yadro on my uh, shelf right now, and it's a Yadro of a mom holding a baby. And I got that Yadro when I had my first daughter, right? And I love it. But say for some reason I wanted to sell it. I would never. But say I did. And I went to a pawn shop and I said, hey, I want to sell this Yadro. And then they say, well, I don't know if this is real. You know, you have your paperwork. And then say, I pull out the paperwork. They would say to me, well, I think that this is fake paperwork. It's my word versus them. Even if I showed them, say, the Yadro purchase on a credit card, an old credit card statement, they could they could say that it's not authentic. They they have the, they, they could say, oh, um, you know, actually, you didn't buy this. You bought this at another pawn shop and uh, someone else owned it before you. I could tell this is an older style. It's just my word versus them. But if you, but if when, but when I bought this Yadro years ago, if Yadro the company tokenized, if they minted all of their goods, all of their collectible items, their physical collectible items, they they also had a digital image that went along with the physical image. I mean, sorry, the physical product. If they also had that digital image, that stamp on the blockchain, so to speak, right? If it was minted into, um, and, and on the blockchain, that, that physical Yadro would always be able to be tracked, so to speak, anytime it was sold and bought and all that kind of stuff. And there would be no question on the authenticity, whatever. So my, my feeling on this space is, um, that you can, tokenize goods, right? You can tokenize goods and you can always trace them back to the original owner or to the, you know, like a stamp of authentication on them, right? Imagine the used car market. Imagine the luxury good market, right? You would never have to worry if you went on Poshmark and if that, that Gucci bag was real. 
because you would be able to check the blockchain, right? You'd be able to check the digital ledger, right? Now, you own, you would own the bag, you know, you'd buy the bag, you'll buy it, you'll wear it, you know, someone else might say, oh, I love that bag she just bought, I'm going to take a picture of that bag for, for whatever reason, and, you know, keep it, good, let them have a picture of the bag, you have the actual bag, and you also know that it's real because it's on the blockchain, you also have the picture of the bag, you know what I'm saying? So, that, that's, that's where I see the implication for uh, the, the technology, right? Um, personally, do I like the NFTs that I have? They're okay. I mean, like, I'm just being honest. They're okay. What do I do with them? They're in my wallet. They're in my digital wallet. And sometimes I'll open my wallet if I'm, you know, looking at what I have and I'll glance at them and I'll roll my eyes at how much I paid for these things, right? But if someone knows me and wants to look in my wallet publicly without me knowing, right? They, if they know my wallet and my, my public key for my wallet, which you, like I said, go and type in Mark Cuban public key in Google. You might find, you know, Coinbase public key, whatever. You might find it, his wallet, see what he owns. You can also see my stuff that I thought was worthy of my money to invest in. So, you know, it's it, why why do people wear designer clothes, drive, drive luxury cars? Why do we hang certain pictures on our walls, you know, why do we do all this stuff? It's, it is just like collecting. Do I think this is a bubble? I mean, I don't think it's really like this, oh my God, a new FT, NFT launch, I have to get it, I have to get it in the next 10 seconds. I mean, which is what it kind of it is right now. This, my, my collection of NFTs sold out, sold out in five seconds. Do, you know, do I think you have to get crazy like that? I mean, no, because there's the chance of them, um, you know, you holding on to something like for years and years, like a stock, you know, do I think it's going to be worth money? No, because I, I didn't make really money on any of my NFTs because I didn't flip them. I, you know, if, when something, by the way, if there's an NFT collection that launches and it's super hot, super hot, right? And you scoop one up. My advice, advice would be to sell it, sell it immediately, get it off your hands, make, flip it, make a quick few bucks, you know, or maybe, but you can't, I wouldn't say time the market. You can't really time the market of this kind of thing. So, that's the deal, right? This is the deal. It's like crypto art, right? This is a big opportunity for artists. They, they're able to capitalize on their intellectual property, on their stuff that they're creating. Um, this is a cool way of us regular folk to uh, buy digital art, right? It's a, it's, it's, it's a, new, it's a new way of... Um, it's just a it, it's just a new way of buying things, right? You know, <clears throat> it's funny. I, I I say this sometimes to my boyfriend, or you know, because he's older, and sometimes he'll you know he'll say, "Oh, I want a big house," and blah, blah, blah. and I'm like, "Why would you want a giant house? Who the hell is going to take care of that house?" And you know, blah blah whatever. Who's going to clean it? Who's going to maintain it? I think and I've been saying this for like literally years. The, the the American dream of having that giant house and the picket fence and and all the crap in your house I think that that stuff is going away that was a, that that was all built up in the 50s you you know the war was over people wanted to show their wealth and you know but whatever have that big beautiful picturesque thing that's not really what it is people today what people are the American dream I think is today or where it's going I don't think people want all that physical stuff. I think people, they're more about themselves, right? Their, their wellness, their health, their, their, their mind, their, their mindfulness. I think that they want assets, financial assets, financial instruments. I think that they want digital assets like this, like these cryptos, right? I think that this is like the younger generation, Gen Z. I think they want an apartment or some housing that's in a convenient area where they can get things fast and delivered. I don't think they, you know, I don't think they care about uh, all that kind of the, that showy stuff then, you know, it's a different generation, it's a different mindset. Um, and this, and I think that this is, this is part of that, right? So for, for us non-Gen Zers, this is how we can, you know, get in the game and it's fun, you know, I mean, because you never know, maybe you'll buy one of these NFTs and the next thing you know, you get an offer because that's how it works, by the way, you'll get it. You could, once you buy an NFT, you can automatically list it. And um, you, you could get an offer that could be double the price. It's fun, you know? So, again, I I think that this is the future. I think there's a lot of implications, um, use cases for uh, 
you know, obviously blockchain technology, this is this is nothing that you don't hear on the news. I hope that I was able to explain this um, to you, you know, and I will say, if you want to see, let me say this, if you want to see some brands, there have been like lots of brands that have been um, jumping on the NFT bandwagon, you know, because it's cool and it's hip and they appeal to the younger people. You know, Taco Bell did NFT tacos last year. Um, Charmin, I think they they had a cute campaign like NFTs are in the toilet, you know, and they had like you could buy like a Charmin toilet paper. And um, Coca-Cola had one. I mean, you know, there's some brands and some brands are doing it crappy and some brands are doing it really cool. But, you know, some of this stuff is like, I think I heard with the Taco Bell one, like they were selling like these NFT tacos and you could buy a taco NFT for like a dollar and then you'd get like free real Taco Bell for life. You know, so it had a real world, a physical world implication with their NFT. But then the price of the digital tacos like went way up, you know, because they just became like cool collector kind of things to have. You know, like you'd want like, you know, all the oxen in your wagon and uh, good old Oregon Trail or something, you know, like, there are these, there are the brands are doing it, some better than others, There and, and and it's cool, you know, it's cool, and it's fun, and, and you just never know, so, but like anything else, you know, you got to do your research, most good NFT projects, you know, have a, I wouldn't say most, I'm going to say all, actually, all good NFT projects are going to have some, um, Someone tied to them that's in the public, maybe it's a big influencer, or they're going to have some big community around them or some like underground kind of community. And those communities are probably going to be on Reddit or they're going to be on Twitter or they're going to be in Discord. And a lot of NFT projects are in Discord and, you know, there's lots of chatter going on and, it, you know, from from one, you know, a collector to the next collector and all that kind of stuff. So, that's what I have to say about NFTs. Um, this is this is a real thing. This is like social media. We have social media. Now this is like, you know, which is obviously dig- digitized social media. Now we're having digital social ass and assets all combined into one, you know, and, um, and there's real, there could be real value. I mean, there, well, there is real value because some of this stuff is, is very, very expensive and is selling for lots of money. And, you know, I have a friend that bought an NFT, sold it and bought his, bought a house, you know? So if you're smart with what you buy in any financial instrument, NFT, crypto, regular ETFs, mutual funds, you of course could turn that into a real, physical, you know, manifestation of when I'm looking at this Peloton right here, I sold a cryptocurrency when I bought my Peloton. That's how I bought my Peloton. Um, and it was, that's just cool. It's, I, you know, I don't use the Peloton because I hate exercising. Every time I look at it, I just think, well, I know what coin I bought that with. And that makes me just so happy. It's the real world and it's, it's real world and real money and cryptocurrency, the convergence of that, that just blows my mind. And I just love it. And I think NFTs are another iteration of that. So I think it opens the door. I think you should jump in. I think for the woman that wants to buy her son the NFT, I think you're like the coolest mom ever. If I told my mom, mom, I want an NFT for my 15th birthday, she's like, what the hell is an NFT? <laughs> so, I think you should dive in. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Again, OpenSea.io. Don't be scared, but be safe. Make sure you have the wallet. And by the way, if you want a hardware wallet, you want to get the, the Ledger Nano and um, and you want to order it from the website directly, don't order it from Amazon because you just never know. You, you order from the source. You want to make sure it's hacked. And any time I should say I use, I, I do anything cryptocurrency related if I'm using my computer not my phone, my computer. I have a separate computer where I do that stuff just from. That doesn't touch any other parts of the web. I bought a computer separate special for that, right? And if you really wanted to get crazy, you can get your own VPN and be trading in Albania and God knows what, but we're we're kind of over those days now because everything's much easier to do and it's easier to transact. But 
That's it for episode 95. I hope I answered all of your questions. If you like this episode, please feel free to reach out to me. Drop me a line um, on Instagram or TikTok Messenger, whatever you want to do. And please leave me a review in the Apple Podcast Store. I'd love to just hear your opinion. I do think if you want me to do more of these, I'm happy to do it. But this is a special episode. It's not something I usually do. So I apologize for those that are like, why isn't she talking to us about hair and dating and sex? We're going to get right back to that. I'm Elise DeLucci. We are live from my living room on the Upper East Side. Happy NFT shopping, and I hope you have a great week. Talk to you soon.